Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service this morning. Uh, I hope you're all well and looking forward to it. Um, we're just going to start with a, with a, with a very short prayer. Um, uh, uh, Emma's going to uh, lead us in worship. Lord God, as we gather together this morning, Lord God, we pray um, for your Holy Spirit to rest among us. Fill us again with your power and your presence, Lord God. And may we worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Emma, over to you. Uh, are we able to unmute Emma? Emma's on mute at the moment. Ruth, can you unmute her? Uh, Amanda, are you able to tell the guys they're on mute, please? <laughs> yeah, not sure what's going on there, Paul. Um, I I can only ask them to unmute. I can't actually unmute them. So um, don't know what's going on. Hi, Emma and Lou are on mute. We can't hear anything. Riches I heed not, no man's empty breath. Thou mine inheritance now and always, thou and thou only, the first in my heart, sovereign of heaven, my treasure, thou King of heaven, thou heaven's bright sun, grant heaven's joys to me, O bright heaven's sun, great heart of my own heart, whatever before, still be my vision, O Whatever before, 
Lord, we thank you that you're the giver of wisdom. And I pray that as we worship you now, that you would um, begin 
and filling us with your wisdom today. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do, yeah, you. God, I look to you. like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. Yeah, yeah. And I will to you, I won't be overwhelmed, give me vision to see things like you do, God, I look to you, you're where my help comes from, give me wisdom, you know just what to do, yeah, yeah. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. Hallelujah, I got a race. Hallelujah, I got a race. And hallelujah, I got a race. Forever, all my days. Hallelujah. Thanks. Thanks, Emma and Lee. Um, we're going to uh, move into a, a time of prayer now, uh, at the end of which uh, we'll have a chance to say the Lord's Prayer together. Uh, but first, I'll lead us uh, in some prayers uh, before we do that. 
Lord God, we pray as we gather together this Sunday morning, we pray for your church, a church universal around the world, for all those who are gathering now, who have already gathered, who will be gathering later. Lord God, we thank you that we um, stand together with them, brothers and sisters, as one in, in Jesus. We pray especially for those in countries who are being persecuted, being attacked, uh, being physically harmed for their faith in you. Lord God, we pray that they would have the strength and the courage to persevere and to endure. And we pray that uh, they will be a, a great witness to those around them, Lord, that, um, that they would uh, exemplify and demonstrate um, your power and your love and the triumph of good over evil, even in the midst um, of their suffering, Lord God, and demonstrate the hope that we have in eternal life. Lord God, thank you uh, that you will reward them and that you, you will be with them during these times. <coughs> Our church leaders as well. We pray for Archbishop Justin, we pray for Bishop Sarah, we pray for Nick, for Tessa, for all those leading us, guiding us, Lord God. We pray uh, for your continued uh, favour upon them. We pray that they would be close to you. We pray for their times with you, that they would uh, be times of refreshment and inspiration, um, Lord God, that you would continue to speak to them, that they would hear your voice, that you would encourage them in the low moments, Lord God, and that we would uh, rejoice with them in the high moments as well, Lord God. And we pray for our, our small community here as well, Lord God. Thank you for your faithfulness to our church through the ages, through the centuries, Lord God. Thank you um, for what you've started here, Lord God. And we pray that, we thank you that you will bring it to fruition, Lord God. We pray uh, for all the initiatives that we've started and are continuing, Lord God, that um, we would have a real impact uh, in our community, uh, both virtual and, and physical and real, on the streets and on the ground there in the City of London. Uh, and we pray uh, for all of those who are connected with our church in some way, um, Lord, that whether they're able to be here or not, Lord, that you would um, be with them, Lord, that they would continue to be growing and be nurtured in their faith with you. And Lord, in the moment of silence, we lift up to those uh, people we know who uh, need a special touch from you at this time. Thank you, Lord. And finally, we will draw all our prayers together in the words of the uh, Lord's Prayer. So I invite you all to unmute uh, and uh, we will say it, say it, pray it together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be your name, your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will, your will be done earth on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today, give us today our bread. daily bread and forgive, forgive us our sins. Our sins. As we, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Kingdom, the kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 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 Well, good morning again. Welcome to all of you. Uh, it's great to be able to worship with you this morning. Uh, in, a, in a short while, Amanda will be will be speaking to us, uh, but before then, uh, I'm going to read to us uh, from the letter uh, that James wrote to the church. And we're reading from James chapter three, verses twelve to eighteen. Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives, or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But you, if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For, there, for, for where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be border and wickedness of every kind. 
But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Amen. Well, over to you, Amanda, and don't forget to unmute yourself. time he was here I think he was probably getting married and uh, we've got just the three of us inside the building give him a lovely grand round of applause <laughs> thank you um, and we're going to be talking this morning about wisdom Paul just read a passage for us we do have to start with the Bible. If we believe that God is real and that God is omnipotent and omnipresent and omni-everything, then we have to start with his word, the Bible. And it says in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Now, fear there means awe, wonder, amazement, respect, and the verse continues, knowing God produces understanding. In other words, I, we, might have knowledge, and I'm very aware that lots of people at Holy Sepulchre are full of good knowledge and experience. I'm sounding very echoey, so we'll see if we can fix that up. Um, people have got power and influence. People have got degrees, success, but if we do not humbly recognize that only God sustains us, we might be merely proclaiming empty, earthly wisdom, as James calls it. Our passage in James says there are two types of wisdom. There's the earthly type, and then there's wisdom he calls from above, God's wisdom. Of course, earthly wisdom may sound very plausible. God gave us brains and capacity to reason, after all, and we can be very insightful. But the greatest human wisdom still has my perspective. And remember that verse where Paul says, even the greatest human reasoning turns out to be foolishness and corruption compared to God. And that's from Romans chapter 1, the very beginning of that great book of theology. We have downsized wisdom to what's good for me and maybe the people I love, my inner circle. Here's an example. Jeff Bezos' space flight website says that his space company, quote, was founded with the vision of enabling a future where millions of people are living and working in space to benefit Earth. Oh, doesn't that sound exciting and philanthropic? There's no mention there, of course, of his ego or the fact that he wants to make money out of space travel from defense contracts as well as commercial. His cleverness and business talent do not necessarily equal wisdom. And in fact, I'd say definitely don't equal wisdom in his case. Let's start at the beginning of humanity's relationship with God, the Garden of Eden. Eve wanted to eat some fruit, remember, the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because it would give her wisdom, wisdom about how to survive, how to thrive by exploiting the knowledge and understanding that God had. Genesis chapter 3. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any fruit tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we ate, may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you mustn't eat fruit from the tree that's in the middle of the garden and you mustn't touch it or you'll die. You will not certainly die, 
the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. We all know what happened. Adam and Eve ate the fruit. And because they took that dangerous step, they were expelled from the garden. Innocence, pure motives were gone, replaced by striving after domination and pride. Men and women, sure enough, had knowledge of right and wrong and good and bad relationships, but rarely used that capacity to live well or act appropriately. If we look at what happens in the Garden of Eden, afterwards we see the dangers of human wisdom that is separated from God. First of all, we cast doubt on God's ways. Don't we do that and hear about it all the time in the media? When something goes wrong, we blame God. We put God on trial, not our own behavior. In Genesis 3, the devil says, did God really say that you shouldn't eat the fruit? He deliberately distorts what God had said, that you could only not eat that particular tree in the middle of the garden. And Eve does point that out to him. To be fair, she did get it right. She did have enough knowledge to rebut him. And she explains what God had told them. But then somehow that isn't important enough. She has no genuine insight, no trust that God is bigger than her own understanding and is way more trustworthy than a snake. I think we all know that, don't we? Except the thing is, the devil doesn't always look like a serpent. And it's so ironic that the devil tells Eve that if she eats the fruit, you will see clearly and you will be like God. Isn't that the way most of us think? My knowledge, my experience mean I can see clearly. We doubt God rather than trust him. And another dangerous result of living without God's wise guidance is we act out of fear, selfishness and jealousy. And you see it instantly happening in Genesis chapter 3. The eyes of both Adam and Eve are opened and they discover that they're naked. And they realized, so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. And then in verse 8 it says, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. I love that description. And they hid from him. Among the trees of the garden, the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He wants fellowship. He wants communication. He wants to share with us. The man answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And God said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree I told you not to eat from? And the man said, here we go. The woman you put here with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the, servant the serpent deceived me and I ate. What's happened? That sense of being pure and open in relationships and being able to rely on trust, represented by nakedness, nothing is hidden, is gone. Adam's afraid and he blames Eve to get out of trouble and does he even know what he's doing? He even blames God. You put her here, God. <laughs> Must be your fault, not my fault. And then, of course, Eve passes the blame to the serpent. Earthly knowledge sees us act selfishly because we think that will preserve us. We blame God rather than our own actions when things go wrong. And we jealously guard our own right, our own ways at the expense of all else. And this distorted view of wisdom means that we can be seen sorry, can be seen in the thinking of um, Richard Dawkins, a famous geneticist and biologist who wrote a book called The Selfish Gene. Now, that theory posited 
um, a generation ago, and I'm going to be super basic here, please, um, is that g my genes cause me to favor selfish behavior that will lead to my flourishing because that will mean I can pass on my genes. Ironically, sometimes I might act selflessly if that means my genes win out too, especially people closely around me because what benefits me and them is good for my genes. From a purely scientific point of view without God in the picture, living things want to promote their own genes so that they survive through many generations. With God in the picture, we have a worldview that wants to see everybody flourish, all people, because we are all made in the image of God, remember way back in that description in Genesis, male and female, we are all alike. Some geneticists have even started to wonder about God and spirituality and genes and where does that leave us. They wonder whether we do have some sort of God imprint. There's another biologist called Richard Hamer um, who says that spiritual experiences and religion are nearly universal in humanity, and there must be some sort of genetic basis for spirituality, something he called a God gene. And he didn't mean that we all have one single gene that represents our soul or our spiritual self, but that perhaps spirituality has a genetic component. It evolved for a purpose. Isn't that amazing that God might have put inside us a desire to reach out to him so that we can be wiser than our simple selves? My answer would be yes. That's what God did design for us because that spiritual longing leads us to God, which leads us to true wisdom and understanding. Wisdom isn't about my genes, me. It's about understanding God's character, God's design, God's justice. So back to the passage in James. You were wondering where I was going, weren't you? James tells us that wisdom that comes from above is, and then he lists all these amazing words, pure, peaceful, gentle, obedient, filled with mercy and good actions, fair and genuine. So maybe that's a test for deciding if something is wise. Does it promote peace, gentleness, mercy, fairness, and good actions? But if a decision or action leads to the other things that James talks about, disorder, jealousy, bragging, selfishness, it is unwise. And he even says it could be evil a decision may sound plausible, it may look attractive, it may do good for me and some others, but if it takes my eyes off God's bigger, better plan and ways, it's actually really harmful and dangerous because it means that we think we can run this world without the Creator. So, how do we find true wisdom rather than having a million little gods of selfish genes and selfish motives? Emma's going to play some music as we think about perhaps some of the things that we need wisdom for at the moment. It might be a really important earthly decision that we have to make where we're going to live or what job that we go for or how much money we spend on something. But there was a message on a website from an Afghani Christian uh, the other day, and it was a man, and he said, will God forgive me if I falter under pressure? They are big questions about wisdom and wise living. And we do well if we remember God's ways and God's wisdom. Did God really say we should search for him first? He did indeed. 
So in the chat afterwards, after the service is over and we're having a chat, I would love to think about some of these really important philosophical, theological life questions about have we got some questions about life that we want to ask and can we draw on the wisdom of some of the people in the chat room because we have the spirit of God within us. Let's pray. Lord God, you are the source of all good, all wisdom. And we thank you for that. We thank you that we can know you, that you have placed inside us a desire to be more than just our selfish genes. You have placed inside us a desire to reach out to the God of eternity. Help us not to miss out on that chance to search for wisdom. Amen. As we pass back to Paul, um, let's just put our questions about wisdom and about how we live our life and don't let them drop away because they're the questions that help us to reach out to other people to say we actually do have some wisdom to offer about life. So Paul, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Amanda. Um, the, uh, I think something that we all struggle with, how to be wise, uh, something we could all do, do with having more of. So I look forward to our, our discussion later. Uh, if anyone would like a particular prayer and you'd, you'd rather not share it in the, in the chat, then you can just message me um, or, or, or Amanda uh, and we will find someone to to pray with you. Okay, uh, before that though, um, we're going to have some, um, just some notices um, about what's coming up uh, over, this, over this week. So I think Ruth, there's a slide, isn't there? Um, which will come up, but the, there's a few things happening during the week. Um, so the first is there's a sung Eucharist, uh, which is every Wednesday. Um, so you can come to the church at one o'clock um, or you can also watch it later and that will be released at six o'clock on Wednesday. Uh, and then there's also a Tuesday service at lunchtime and that will be via Zoom. So that's a 1.15 via Zoom. Uh, and then coming up next month, there's two things. One is the City Prayer Breakfast. Uh, which is on Wednesday the 13th of October, uh, please do, which will, be, which will be at the church, please do book your tickets. Um, and if you're able to help serve breakfast or tea and coffee, um, then do let Sarah know because we can deal with some more helpers. Uh, and the other thing that's happening next month is we are running a God at Work course, um, which will start on Monday the 18th of October. 
Um, so you can visit the link on the church website, hcl.church forward slash God at work. Um, and it's basically, it's a course um, which, we, which we ran a while ago, about seven or eight years ago now, which is designed um, to um, basically help us be integrated people. So uh, living our, our Christian lives as much as at work as at home as at church and understanding God's purpose for our work. Um, and so it's a really helpful way to um, think about our work in the context of, of, our, of, our, of our faith. Um, so I would encourage you to, to sign up for that if you haven't done it before, or even if you have and you want, uh, you want a refresher. Um, so those are the notices. Um, we're going to have a final song, um, after which the kind of the service itself will come to a close. But do please uh, stay if you would like to chat a bit more and maybe discuss th uh, and talk through some of the uh, things that Amanda raised. Um, so we're going to hand back to Emma now for the for the final song. to unmute on the um, church stream.
Thanks, uh, Emma. We're going to draw our service to a close now, but as I said before, do, do feel free to, to stay. Um, but we're going to draw our service to a close by saying the grace together, which I've uh, posted the words in, in the chat. Um, so we can say that together. And do feel free to unmute yourself if you would like. So the grace of our Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ and the love, love of God and the fellowship, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with, with us all evermore. evermore. Amen. 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 Well, that brings our service to the close to a close. Um, and then if you would like to stay, then do just please stay and we will, depending on who's left, we will either go into uh, breakout rooms or we'll all just stay in one room.